Lars from Unicorn Reviews here and today we're taking a look at an OEM or a reference version of the AMD HD Radeon 7770. Now as always I'm a bit late when it comes to video card reviews so there's probably a lot of um, reviews that have been done before but those will be done on older drivers so this one we're using 13.6 uh, drivers from AMD. Uh, anyway quick look around the car there's a small fan in there and I'm gonna get the ruler because I always forget um, dimensions so it's a, a 75 millimeter fan so a small fan probably enough to keep a, a small cart like this cool the cart itself is um, from the bracket just under 20 centi 21 centimeters long um, width well that's just standard width isn't it yeah nine and a half centimeters it's a, a dual slot configuration as you can see so it will take two slots in your system the top slot is to get the air out um, I'm gonna get this one closer as you can see it's not one of those um, cooling solutions with heat pipes and fins this is just I think an aluminium um, base with uh, fins on as you can see there's your uh, PCI connector on the back there's one six pin getting out of the, the camera here so one six pin and then this is the side you'll probably see in your system as the cart will hang a bit like this there's uh, some more small vents reminding you it's an HD radian again now just a pretty simple looking card but it looks pretty good doesn't it um, so now the problem at the moment is that it's very very hot in here so instead of taking off all my clothes what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wait quite a bit for the temperatures to cool down and then we'll give it some test runs um, we're gonna do some runs at stock speeds and we're gonna do some runs where we overclock as much as we can with this card uh, also something I haven't said before this is a 2 gigabyte model the only difference with the OEM cards from a 1 gigabyte model is that there's more memory chips on the back also the bracket is spring loaded but I think that's with a, like that with every um, reference card so um, that was pretty much it for the intro there's no unboxing since it's an OEM card so it doesn't come with any boxes or anything so let's wait for the sun to go away so that we can uh, test this thing alright guys so um, this is what it looks like when you put it inside the system so as you can see we have a slightly bent uh, mini ITX motherboard which is because the uh, the back plate on the CPU cooler is a bit too thick anyway um, yeah this is pretty much what it looks like so it will have a bit of overhang over your ITX motherboard but in most ITX cases it will probably fit just fine and you know, I pretty much think this is the type of card you put into an ITX system so I'm gonna stop recording this part because it's very very shaky and YouTube people don't like that so let's go on with the testing now alright more shaky cam uh, we got GPU Z there we go showing all the pixels on my screen uh, so yeah it's a, a cat Cap Verde uh, card, so it's on the 28 nanometer process. And you can just see that it has uh, 1,500 million transistors, um, has a pixel fill rate of 16 gigapixels per second, 2 gigabytes of memory. This card, and then you got a GPU clock of 1 gigahertz and 1.125 gigahertz for the memory. It doesn't come with CUDA or physics, obviously, because it's not. An Nvidia card and only Nvidia cards have that which is pretty stupid um, bus width is only 128 bits so that only gives us a bandwidth of 72 gigabytes a second which is quite a lot less than other cards we've tested so far but then this is only a 100 euro card I'm gonna go back a bit that would help yeah so at the moment um, Belgian temperatures aren't gonna go down uh, soon so we're gonna run it with a def with an ambient temperature of probably 28 29 degrees here 
in my room. And yeah, that will be like a worst case scenario or for people who put their PCs away, don't dust it off for you guys. This will be a pretty accurate review. Alright guys, we're in Crisis 3. Um, I must have opened something here. Oh, it's just a cutscene. Cool. So anyway, um, I'm going to go into graphic options first. So graphics, 1080p full screen, no anti-aliasing, low texture resolution, low system spec. And applying it. There we go. And as you can see right now in the top left corner, you can see temperatures, um, CPU usage, and frame rate. And let's see if we can attack some cell here. Now, I can't actually see my screen too well. I can't actually see anything. So, uh, excuse my poor playing style here. Because I can't actually see anything. This is just... Um, so, as you can see, we're getting 40 plus frames a second. So, I would call Crisis 3 playable on lowest settings. I mean, we're approaching 50 now. Now, I like to be um, stuck in the V-Sync all the time when playing games. But if you're going to play this game to... Um, uh, buy this card to play Crisis 3, then you can. Because it runs good enough, doesn't it? Now, I don't want to make this video too long. So, I'm just going to cut out of here already. And play some other games. Alright, we're um, launching Battlefield 3. Now I'm already going to uh, say some stuff um, with the earlier test on Crisis 3 that pretty much tells us that we can also run Far Cry, um, Far Cry Blood Dragon. So because they use the same engine and they're equally intense to your system. So you can run all of those games and the, when you buy this card it should come with Tomb Raider, Far Cry Blood Dragon and what else does it come with? Bioshock Infinite. So that's a nice pack of games. But, you know, I didn't really get that with this card because, well, it's an OEM card. So, again, top left says our frame rates. Alright, we're playing. Let's see what graphic settings we're on. So video. There you can see our graphic settings which are pretty damn high. Um, frame rate is in the 30s. Actually that's if only I can remember what the crouch button is. It's Reload here. As you can see, Battlefield on Ultra is ah, it's playable. Now I pick up this weapon. This is the part where I step through a door and somebody attacks me from there. Yes, it is. Uh, now let's do some button bashing. Hmm, that went rather well. Press E to climb out. Great. So as you can see, Battlefield 3 on Ultra settings is completely playable. Which for a 100 euro card is yeah, pretty brilliant, isn't it? And now I got a shot. Okay, um, let's go to the next game. Okay, um, Dirt 3. Here are our graphic settings, which is, you know, Pretty much maxed out, isn't it? Let's put that on high. Oh, there are ultra settings. Let's go ultra everything. We are going to put VSync on though. Actually, no, because this is just a benchmark. Okay. So, Dirt 3 maxed out on a 100 euro card. Let's see what it's like. Uh, I'll be 
playing with um, the arrow key, so I probably... I haven't actually thought of how I'm going to shift. No, yeah, whatever. But in the loading screens at least we're getting above 60 frames a second, now it drops again. Great, Aurelia Finland. So we're getting 40 frames a second here. That's our e -break. I'm just gonna see where the shift thingy shift. How do I shift? Because all right, just put it on automatic. Great. All right, let's win this rally. But yeah, this is more than playable. We're getting 42 frames a second here. Now this is uh, another one of those AMD Gaming Evolved um, titles, so it is possible that uh, we'll do some NVIDIA um, sponsored games later, actually after this. But yeah, we're getting above 40 frames a second. Uh, with an ambient temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, we're getting only uh, 80 degrees on the graphics card. I'll put off um, the sound of the game, so the graphics card is what you hear on the background now. That, that was pretty doable, wasn't it? So, um, let's now go to some games that were built for NVIDIA cards. Alright, so for that, turns out we do not have any NVIDIA games on my computer. So I'm going to turn off the overlay because you can see frame rates in the right corner now. When I find my mouse, which, oh, there it is, we're going to run the benchmark. Now this is at uh, stock settings, so that's um, 1 GHz on the core and 11 once again, we had a little bit of a problem with my recording just stopping. I'm not going to do the entire benchmark. This is just to get a score. I'll show you guys the score at the end, and then I'll overclock it and give you the score with overclocks on. Alright guys, so this is done. Um, and at stock clock speeds we got 654 points. Now, just for comparison, uh, a 7970 overclocked will do uh, about 2200 uh, 7870 Tahiti card will do about 1600 when overclocked now this was on maximum settings here extreme HD so now I'm gonna overclock it and yeah let's see what it does alright so um, we got 761 points now uh, which is quite a lot more than we had earlier on and this is with um, 2200 on the core and 1300 on um, the memory. Now the memory is ridiculously good and we can probably overclock it quite a lot further but um, Afterburner only allows us to go up to 1300 kinda sucks so I just maxed out these two um, I got yeah that's a 22 percent overclock I couldn't get it any higher than that um, now to uh, get some decent temperatures here and you might call me crazy I just got two bowls of ice next to the GPU fan which doesn't get picked up at all on camera but uh, yeah that was pretty much it for the testing um, actually I think I'm just gonna do the conclusion like this because it's really hot and I don't want to have to take five showers to do one conclusion video Anyway, from what, all of this what we can tell is the reference cooler on the 7770 is pretty good. We only got 82 degrees here. 
and that's like a 50 degree delta so that's pretty good with maximum voltage I also really like the fact that we get voltage control instead of just power limit so that's a, a great feature um, yeah memory usage 2 gigabytes is helpful so we, we got uh, 1.3 gigabytes of memory usage um, it can get pretty good frame rates uh, it plays every game I mean some games only low setting but it does play every game out there so that's very very good for a 100 euro price and with all of that in mind I'm just gonna give it a gold award um, why not platinum well you know it's an older card and I expect great things of the 9000 series so with that in mind gold not platinum um, anyway thank you very much for watching um, please comment and you know give some reactions feedback to the video and um, yeah subscribe to the channel if you want to thank you very much for watching